So in protection and cable requirement tab, we're going to design the MCB size, the circuit breaker size, and the cable size that's needed for the system. If we don't design our cable and MCB based on this key rule, we increase the chances of fire and short circuit that's going to hurt a lot of equipment in our system. So it is very, very important to keep the design values and protection equipment in the right range so that our system is safe to work and provides reliable electricity all the time with minimal hazards. The way it works is that I need to pick a cable amperage and a cable size first. Let's say that the system suggests that I use six square millimeter. I'm going to use six here. And then it should be at least 47 amps. I'm going to use 50 amps. Then if I'm using a 50 amp cable, so your circuit breaker should be something less than that. So when I put 50 here, I need to make sure that the circuit breaker is designed for that cable. However, this 40 here is red, meaning it's not a good design because the 40 amps here is less than 47 design current in the system. So I need to change the circuit breaker here from 40 to say 55, but 55 leads to this number turning red, indicating that your cable is not handling 55 amperes. So you better have a circuit breaker that's more than design current. So it handles the usual current in the system. Before you reach the rated amper for your cable, the circuit breaker activates and stops the current. So 48 should be a good number here because it's more than design current and less than the cable amperage here. This pattern applied to every piece of the system because every system part is connected to different components with different current and different voltage requirement, which changes the preference for cable size and circuit breaker size. So right now what we designed was for the PV panels to charge controller, and then you could design that for charge controller to batteries, from batteries to inverter, and from inverter output to your loads, whatever, the load requirement is. The same pattern happens for every single piece of the system as you see here. Uh, I'm not going through the details here. It's all pretty much the same as the first one we did. With that being said, let's move to the next tab, which is the design summary. After you finish the protection design here, it provides an input summary and output summary for you. The input summary is all the values that you entered in the system so that the toolkit provided the outputs for you. And these are the outputs that you need for the system to provide reliable electricity based on the location you have and for the loads that you have specified in the demand tab. So it tells me right now I need one six kilowatt inverter and it's calculated in the inverter tab. I need 48 of this type of battery and it's calculated in this tab and so on and so forth. The next tab here is the schematic of the system. There are two types of system. If you remember, we mentioned from the beginning when we were designing the inverter, if we want to use all in one inverter or not. This is arrangement of equipment that has a separate inverter and a separate charge controller. And here you see schematics of a system that has all in one charge controller and inverter. This NA mentions this is not the current design. So the next tab here has the costs. There are two types of costs. There is one capital cost and one operation cost. The capital costs are the ones that are required to build the system. Once the system is running, then we need to deal with the operation cost because each piece in the system has a shelf life and when it reaches to the end of shelf life then we need to replace them so that we could provide reliable electricity. For the expected life cycle of each component there is a worst case scenario and a best case scenario. You could define these scenarios like how many years these are going to last based on your experiences or asking from technical experts based on certain brands and equipment that you want to use. And let's say your battery is going to work from like, you know, three years to six years. 
it tells you that you need to save money every year so that at the end of the worst case, at the end of year three, you could replace your battery system with new sets of battery so you could provide reliable electricity. And also for the best case, if your batteries are going to last six years, you need to save this amount of money each year so that at the end of year six, you could replace your batteries. This is particularly important for providing electricity for communities and setting up a tariff for users so that people pay some money every year that could be used for replacing equipment at the end of their life cycle so that the system is going to run all the time and have reliable electricity supply for a community. The next tab has installation series. If you decide to partially set up your system instead of having all the batteries and all the panels connected together and then add to it later, you need to make sure that the charge controller and the batteries are getting the currents within the reasonable range for them to work. So this table here provides you with the opportunity so that you use a fraction of the total calculation and it tells you if the currents and amperes in the system are within the range that's going to work for your battery system and charge controller if they are appropriate. The further explanation on it is also mentioned in this gray box. The last two tabs are for catalogs. If you're using certain product, you could use the catalog to save it here for easy access to them. And if you want to know more on protection, there are some information with useful links mentioned in this last tab for you. Thank you everyone for watching this tutorial. Make sure that if you have any question, you reach us at info at greenempowerment.org. And thank you.